Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated economist here. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. China can't take the heat. They started up liquidity injections. Very much like the Federal Reserve's non-QE QE, China's doing something very similar to that. And they're also kicking up the rhetoric, saying that money, tight money policies weren't as damaging to the economy, something like that. Anyway, I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys. But ultimately, what China's trying to do is change the market perception into believing that this tight money policy that has constricted the economy is going to subside. That's what they're trying to push out there for the next six months. Or at least the idea of that for the next six months. Who knows what they'll actually do. Here in the United States, the Federal Reserve is still doing their quantitative easing. $120 billion a month worth of treasury and mortgage-backed security purchases every single month. At the same time, they're pulling cash out every single day to a tune of like $800 billion. And this is mind-blowing because when I first started following the Federal Reserve, they had $850 billion on their balance sheet. Now they pull $850 billion out of the money markets and big banks off their balance sheet every day. Like, the amount that they deal with in their overnight repo is the same amount that their entire balance sheet was back in 2007. Like, for people who study the economy for the first time, that's not a big deal. But anybody who has, like, followed the Fed for any length of time, that is just, like, it's jaw-dropping to think about. But ultimately, what the Federal Reserve is trying to do is to maintain enough liquidity out there that they don't run into a panic. See, it's really difficult to wrap your head around the what the Federal Reserve is trying to do just for the United States. Because ultimately, the Federal Reserve is mandated to do two things. Low and stable prices of around 2% and full employment. Now... All the years that I've followed the Federal Reserve, they have failed to meet that 2% inflation rate. Like, they are either they have either been under it or they are shooting way over it. And never have I ever seen, you know, since the 2007 when I started watching the Fed, have they ever been able to maintain that 2%. They have never, like, man, we did it for two years straight. No, never happened, ever. So they suck at that. The other thing that they're maintain, mandated to do is to keep a low unemployment or full employment. And to me, this is a very interesting one because what is it that they're asking of this? What is what is the mandate really trying to get them to do? Because really, if it's low unemployment, that's just how many people are not collecting unemployment insurance, right? That's unemployment. Because if you're no longer collecting unemployment and you don't have a job, you fell off of the workforce. You're like no longer part of the workforce. Even though you may want a job, you're just like out there in limbo. So they don't count you. You're just like, you're not counted. <laughs> and so I, when I watch the workforce depleting and I see like, you know, the Federal Reserve saying once we have achieved our mandate, I'm thinking, what is your mandate? Why don't you just... Cut out all the unemployment insurance and you achieve your mandate. You know, all these people would be unemployed, but that ain't a matter. You know, it's like, that's not part of your mandate. Your mandate is to keep low un unemployment. Because the workforce is not a real accurate number to follow. Not, not in my opinion. I mean, there's plenty of people out there who are capable of working. That would be the workforce. That's my opinion. So until the Federal Reserve can achieve this mandate of low and stable prices of around 2% of average inflation over the course of however many years they judge that by, in this low unemployment, once that is achieved, then they will reverse course. But until then, they are going to continue with the quantitative easing injections. At the same time, there's just too much money in the system, so they have to do this repo facility thing where they pull this money out. Now, that's trying to deal with the United States. The Fed also has the world reserve currency that they have to try and deal with. And this comes down to how much demand for the currency is there. See, this is the reason why I feel that they are not ending the quantitative easing programs. It's because they want to be able to maintain a lot of cash in the system 
in case there is a sudden cash run. And now I'm going to try to, to explain this really simply because this is, gets very, very complicated very fast. There are contracts written all around the globe. These contracts are due in U.S. dollars. They are used as if they are U.S. dollars, even though they have nothing to do with the United States. So this is a shadow currency system. They get used all around the globe. Occasionally, there could come a time where rolling over these old contracts into a new contract is incapable of happening. Whether it just ends, they don't want to do it, whatever happens, this contract needs to get paid. Therefore, you need to go find the dollars in order to get out of this contract. If enough of those contracts start to come due, there could be a demand for cash unlike anybody has ever seen. Now, that's in the shadow part of things. There is also plenty of nations around the world who have written their bonds, like their sovereign bonds that are due in U.S. dollars. The United States at one time had done this in a foreign currency, where back in the 70s, they were called Carter bonds, where the United States, there was such a fear of inflation going on in the United States, and they had such trouble borrowing that they had to promise to pay it back in a foreign currency. I think it was German and uh, Swiss francs at the time. And that they would promise to pay it back in a foreign currency and that way they could borrow money. Seriously. I mean, this took place here in the United States. They were, like I say, look it up. They're called Carter bonds. So other nations around the world do the same thing with the U.S. dollars. And the reason they do it is because they get the best interest rates if they go that way. If there is all of a sudden a hyperinflation scenario taking place in around the world, there could be a demand for dollars unlike anybody has ever seen. So... The Federal Reserve can't just like turn off their capabilities of printing money. They really need that in case there is this run for dollars. And at the same time, they have too many dollars in the system because they don't want to turn off that printing press. So they have that repo facility trying to pull it all out. This is going to be a dangerous game for them to play. I mean, you can see how easily the Federal Reserve could lose control over all this. But this is what I see. And... I don't know. I mean, give us some time. Maybe things will ease up and the Federal Reserve might back off on that quantitative easing program saying, yeah, we have definitely plenty of money in the system now. But as far as I can tell, it's my belief that the Federal Reserve doesn't think that they have printed up enough. All right. An educated economist. Oh, before I let you go, UFO's engine sent me a, another postcard. Thank you very much, UFO Engines. I really appreciate it. I love these things. Alrighty. Uh, what else I got? Oh, go check out the Uneducated Economist website so that you can also find the links to the podcast. Uh, I know a lot of people who are uh, interested in listening to these as opposed to watching them on YouTube. So if you are more of a... Uh, more the individual who wants to listen into the listen to these uh, to these videos on a podcast, you can go find the links there on the uneducatedeconomist.com website. And uh, appreciate that, uneducated economist. You guys, let me know.